Hello everyone, Matt here and welcome to Simply Strength. In today's more freeform video, I wanted to discuss the powerful effect of heroes or role models in a person's life by listing the top 10 people that inspire me at this moment in my life. My goal is to hopefully provide some impetus or awareness for you to take away and develop your own list or reaffirm that which you know already. Please do bear in mind though that in emulating role models we're not trying to live like, be like or act like de facto clones of these individuals. Rather, we should realise and give credit to aspects of these people that we identify with, integrate those aspects, be aware of them, digest them and then use them to contribute to our own unique existence. I credit my heroes with providing a lot of inspiration and awe during my early years and particularly during my teens, extending still to the present day. They provided a supreme amount of guidance and continue to do so, which was either lacking at the time or non-existent with regards to school, for example. So... Without further ado, I'll go through this list and briefly reflect on what these people mean to me and finish by summarising the impact of this on my character and moulding of my personality. I'd strongly urge you to reflect and think about who inspires you and who your heroes are. Firstly then, number one is Bruce Dickinson, and these are in no particular order. One of my true heroes for many years, since my mid to late teens, going on for 12 years. Bruce is the lead singer of legendary metal band Iron Maiden, my favourite band of all time. Bruce is one of a very small group of individuals, and there's almost universal agreement on this. He's been referred to as a modern-day polymath, engaged in the public eye. He's the consummate Renaissance man, echoing back to Michelangelo, Da Vinci, Benjamin Franklin, Newton, Copernicus et al. This is not just me saying it. Intelligence Life magazine named him so in 2009. The evidence for this is unequivocal. He's not only one of the greatest heavy metal singers of all time, with astounding range and skill lending his voice to landmark albums such as Number of the Beast, Seventh Son of a Seventh Son and Power Slave to name a few. He also forged a solo career during a brief break in the mid to late 1990s. And some would argue that the albums he put out during that interim time were better than Iron Maiden's offerings. In addition to his musical endeavours, he's also a trained pilot, an author, broadcaster, businessman, entrepreneur, motivational speaker and brewer. Finally, he has also competed internationally in fencing, placing 7th in Great Britain and founding his own fencing equipment company. With such a wide breadth of interests and passions, I think you'll agree that Bruce is a living example of a true renaissance man, pouring his energy and infectious enthusiasm into a wide range of areas. He's someone that inspires me to put 100% into every facet of my life and truly pursue all of my interests and hobbies with maximum effort and passion. Next, Jason Becker. To me, Jason is a very special person, who, as he is to so many others. A talented and prodigious guitarist with impossible technique. He was cruelly diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, at the age of 21, just as he was making his way in his career. He was on the verge of making the big time with David Lee Roth's band, when he had to leave due to the progressive worsening of the condition. He lost the ability to play guitar, move and speak, and now communicates with a system of eye movements devised by his father. Astoundingly, Jason still composes music and has released this on several albums, demos of his old recordings in his teens, as well as music composed with a bespoke computer system. Jason inspires me to this day because of his refusal to give in, and his desire to live out his life and passion to the full, regardless of his condition. Whilst initially when I became aware of him, I was drawn to his phenomenal ability on the guitar, I find now that his personality and humble nature are more inspiring. Technique can be learned, but it is the expression of technique in compositions and songs, on stage whilst performing, that truly encapsulate what you're all about. Jason is a true legend, a wonderful human being and a massive role model to me, and I strongly urge you to check him out even if you're not a fan of rock music. His story is a fine example of the power of the human spirit. Next, moving into a completely different discipline, the sport of cricket, Dirk Nannis. Dirk is an Australian cricketer who originally started off as a mogul skier and for most of his late teens and early 20s competed and was almost uh, almost qualified for the Olympics, I believe, the Winter Olympics. And played cricket as a pastime, a hobby. So he would tend to play games at the start of the season and then at the end of the season and never really took it too seriously. But he started to bowl quick in his mid in his mid twenties, and 
then finally stuck around and got a contract with the Australian stateside, Victoria. And he's become a 2020 cricket specialist. And he made his first class debut at 29. And he's still playing cricket into his late 30s and bowls very quick. So his example really proved to me that it's never too late to change tack. And if you're really going to have a passion, then you should divest all your, uh, divert rather, all your energy into it and really strive to succeed and be the best you can be. And it's never too late, obviously within reason, but you should always strive to be the best you can and fulfill your potential, whatever that may be. Next example is, next role model rather, is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Most of you out there, I'm sure, will look up to Arnold in some way. And I know that there are people out there that go on about steroid abuse and so on, and that, that old chestnut keeps coming out. But Arnold has, to me, set a fine example of, of someone who has achieved most of their goals in life. And you can watch the inspirational videos on him on YouTube, how he forged ahead with his goals regardless of the naysayers. And it's an absolutely fine example of someone that just did not care what other people said to him. And he's, you look at all the goals. And Bill Burr did this very well in a stand-up sketch where he said that, you know, Arnold wanted to lift weights and be Mr. Universe and really become a huge figure in bodybuilding. And he did it. Um, the stories when he came out of the, when he was in the army and he snuck out to win a competition, a bodybuilding competition in Stuttgart. Um, and he got thrown in the jail, I believe, for a short period. And then he goes over to America. He had the dream to go to America and go to Venice Beach and compete and lift. And obviously he destroyed bodybuilding and won it, you know, seven-time Mr. Olympia, I believe. And not just that, but he then decides to move into the world of acting. And there were naysayers galore, people saying, oh, Arnold, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't act, no one can pronounce your name, you've got a thick Austrian accent. And again, he just didn't care less. He thought to himself, oh, well, I've been successful in bodybuilding and I did that, that was uh, achievable and I did it. Why should I listen to these guys? I'm just going to go ahead and do it. And I've forgotten also that when he initially went to America, he started up his own business. I believe it was it, you could hire a um, a bodybuilder to do roofing. I think that's the one. I've got his book, so I'm going to go back through and, and reread that. But um, as far as I understand it, he was already extremely wealthy before he even got into acting. And then, what does he do next? He he says, oh, "I'm going to become the highest paid actor in Hollywood." And of course, when they uh, signed him on for Terminator 2, he was. He got a huge contract. All of this obviously wasn't enough, so he's, he's hungry for more success. So he decides to then uh, marry a Kennedy, which, which is almost American, American royalty. People say it couldn't be done, and he did it. Then he decides to move forward into politics become the governor of a state. Some would say the greatest state in America, uh, California. And as you actually read these goals out and, and the things that he's achieved in his life, just to achieve one of them would be an achievement for most, most people. So for me, Arnold's achievements extend far beyond bodybuilding, although the debt bodybuilding owes to him is... is is huge. I look to him in more other areas in terms of someone who, again, has achieved a lot in a lot of different disciplines. And those are the aspects that I take from his example. Any passion that I have, any hobby, I always try and put in 100% and move things forward and almost leave nothing on the bar. My next hero is John F. Kennedy. Lately, I've been getting into a lot of books about 
uh, JFK. Not just about the actual assassination and the conspiracy theories, if you'd like to call them that. The main thing I take from JFK is his courage. Although it wasn't public knowledge at the time, uh, JFK was standing up to his generals who wanted to attack first. They wanted to attack the Soviet Union with a preemptive strike. They wanted to escalate things in Vietnam. And Kennedy said, knew that they wouldn't win. And behind closed doors, he wanted to pull out of Vietnam and he was standing up for his convictions. I've got numerous, numerous books. For example, JFK and the Unspeakable by uh, James Douglas which I'm uh, planning to read very soon. I've also read uh, One Minute to Midnight by Michael Dobbs about the Cuban Missile Crisis. And also They Killed Our President by Jesse Ventura. And all of these provide an insight and provide the counter-argument to the mainstream media. So the, the traits that I look to in JFK are his resolve. He's probably the most charismatic president um, of all time, he was certainly up there, and also the fact that he, towards the end, before he was assassinated, he really was trying to end the Cold War, he was a champion of civil rights in America, and these are all admirable qualities. Everyone's got their flaws, no doubt about it, he was involved with, with some um, negative activities, but I'm looking for the best traits from him. So I certainly looked to him in, in a lot of ways. There's a lot of good work done by Oliver Stone and Peter Kuznick, and you can look up those videos on YouTube and also get their book, The Untold History of the United States, and that includes a lot more material on JFK's presidency. Number five, then, or the fifth hero in my list, is Edward Snowden, the CIA contractor who exposed the NSA spy programs at the age of 29, a true patriot to me, and a whistleblower, and also a hero. He exposed the unconstitutional, rather, mass surveillance of the NSA programs, and for that, he essentially sacrificed his life. He's now in exile in Russia. He knows that if he goes back to America, he'll be thrown in jail, probably never to leave. That will be um, executed for treason. He's been called a traitor by much of the mainstream media. And to me... This is a guy who had a good job, a great job, good income. He had um, an attractive girlfriend, a good family, and he decided to abandon all of that for the truth and to alert the American people to the unconstitutional programs that were in place. And for that, he sacrificed his, his life. So what do I look to in, in Edward Snowden that inspires me is to always preach the truth. Stand by the truth and stand by your convictions. Do take advice from other people, always. But ultimately, you have to stand by what you believe in. And his example, his is a fine example of the path to follow. Next is Jesse Ventura. Jesse, again, is someone who's succeeded in a number of areas in his life. He, for example, was a Navy SEAL. Uh, an underwater demolitions expert. Then he moved into professional wrestling. He's also been an actor. Famously, he was in Predator with Arnold Schwarzenegger. And more recently, he's also been a mayor and also a governor, governor of Minnesota. So what do I get from Jesse? Jesse is passionate. He's a true patriot. He hosts his own show called Off the Grid on YouTube. He's a champion, a libertarian, and he's just the values that he epitomizes. He is a patriot by truly critiquing his government and holding their feet to the fire. And it's something to truly be inspired by. He's achieved such a lot in a number of different fields, almost as, uh, as much as Arnold has. And I certainly follow, like to follow his example again. So I think be passionate. You should always strive to be a renaissance man, a polymath, and make time for your interests and hobbies and always strive to be the best you can be. Moving back into sports, my next hero is Jan Zalesny, 
the Czech javelin thrower, who's probably dominated his sport more than any other um, person in athletics, perhaps. He holds, still holds the amazing world record throw of 98 metres 48, which he gained in uh, Germany, I believe, in Jena, I think that's how you pronounce it, in 1996. And he also holds the top five javelin performances of all time. So again, that just illustrates his complete dominant, dominance. rather. Relentless trainer, Steve Backley commented that he trained with him to see what secret he was harbouring, that there must be an area of weakness, but he found that Jan didn't have any and had worked on them all truly developed the weak areas of his technique, like whether they were fitness or technical aspects of how you throw, the psychological side. In the 26th of March, 19, on the 26th of March 1997 in Stellenbosch, South Africa, he threw over 90 metres five times in a single meeting, which is insane. To me, though, his iron will to dominate and his sheer ownership of the event is a trait that I aspire to emulate in all my fields of interest, and I'm sure it's something that you can relate to as well. Okay, the last two heroes on my list. The first one is Christopher Hitchens. Renowned atheist, or anti-theist as he preferred to be called, excuse me, and polemicist, he had a razor-sharp wit, superb in a debate, wizard with words, and basically a, just a legendary figure in, in debate and polemicism. In spite of his diagnosis with esophageal cancer in 2010, he steadfastly fought the disease and never refused to give in to advice to change his ways from religious people. He didn't care, and this is a supreme example of a courageous person. To firmly stand by your beliefs and continue, he fought until the bitter end to continue do, to do speaking, continue to debate, and most of all, continue to write, because that's what he saw as his purpose in life. And he was courageous till the end. And that's something that I truly internalise and relate to. Uh, another aspect of Christopher as well that I, I relate to is his thirst for knowledge and his passion for reading. Um, he had an extensive library in his Washington apartment. And this is something that I try to emulate as well. I read all the time. And... Try, I'm trying to put together a library that's even half as good as his because um, I think reading is one of the most important things that a person can engage in. So they're the aspects that I take from, from Christopher Hitchens. And lastly, staying on the theme of literature, Stephen King. Purely because of how prolific he is as a writer, even after the, um, the accident that he had, the um, uh, involvement with the car accident that... Uh, injured him severely he's come back and he continues to write pro in a prolific manner for example when you see a shelf at Waterstones dedicated to his work you know he's been you know that's someone that's been supremely successful and has just dominated I mean literally there's an entire shelf there just called Stephen King packed with his novels so again the, the qualities that I draw from that are you know you should always strive to to be prolific, always have another project. I mean, the amount of books that he releases every year is ridiculous. And you should always strive to be doing something. You know, always have a plan, have a, a framework of what you're going to do next. So I've done that task, what am I going to do afterwards? Okay, I hope that's been useful for you and it gives a bit of insight into my own heroes and role models at this point in time. Of course, do bear in mind that this list is fluid and this is only a top 10 and I've got a lot more people that I would call role models and heroes. So this list will change over time as we change as people. I'd love to hear your comments, thoughts and perspective down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you found this video useful and would like to help me continue to make the best videos possible, please check out my Patreon page. Thank you and take care.